Hey, howdy, folks! It is Diecast Buffet here again. Today we'll be talking about how to get into NASCAR diecast collecting for the beginner. With the new NASCAR season about to happen in 2024, I feel like it's a great opportunity uh, for any maybe new fans or fans who haven't collected in years or maybe want to just start, you know, collecting NASCAR diecast. This will be kind of a complete guide on the current state of NASCAR diecast and what to expect and how to be able to get, you know, you know, whatever you're looking for. Um, whether you're a, a small time collector, big time collector, whatever you're looking for, you better figure out in today's video. So make sure to give the video a huge thumbs up and let's hop into it. So currently in the NASCAR diecast market, there's two scales. You have 164 and then you have 124. 124 is more or less the more expensive option. The cars, well, let's just say they're a lot larger. 164 is the economy line, so to speak. They're the size of a Hot Wheels or a, match, a Matchbox car. You can collect a buttload of them. They're really easy to store and they're just cooler in my opinion. <laughs> so with the 124 scale, you have multiple options with it. You have the ARC, which is the Action Racing Collectible, is the acronym ARC for it. It basically means standard version. You get opening hood, opening roof flaps, and that's pretty much it. But if you get the Elite version, you're going to be able to get those two features. But you also get an opening trunk, and it'll have a gas tank. Uh, design inside the trunk as well. I don't know how how well that looks on the Gen 7 ones because I haven't seen a Gen 7 Elite, but I have seen Gen 6 Elite. And that's another thing. There is a brand new car model uh, that was released in 2022, the Gen 7. So if you're looking for 124s of Gen 7, be mindful they are a lot more expensive than the Gen 6. Uh, Gen 6 retired in 2021. If you're a, a brand new collector and you just want to get into just, you know, what a 124 die cast is, I could not recommend the Gen 6 ones. The, uh, they are very easy to get. They're very cheap and they're at least newer. So it doesn't feel like you're getting just only retired drivers. Because if you really want the cheapest bang for your buck and the best quality, the Gen 4 era is absolutely the way to go. But unfortunately, most of the drivers have already retired. So if you want to, I don't know, support a, a Chase Elliott, uh, a, a Denny Hamlin or whoever, Gen 6 would be a great option for a lot of collectors. It's a, a brand new 124 line going to be coming out in 2024 or a version of the 124 line. And it is like the premium edition. I don't know the official name of it currently because it literally is just coming out this year. It's going to have like hood tethers. It's going to have a whole bunch more detail to it. The price for it... <laughs> It's going to have a lot more detail to it as well, in terms of zeros probably. But if you're like, money doesn't matter, you want the best quality 124 scale die cast on the market, make sure to get that version of it. It's probably going to be very limited. You'll probably see like the Hendrick Motorsports paint schemes, Joe Gibbs, Penske. I don't think you're going to see that car made for like Michael McDowell or Cole Joy, the middle to late packed, uh, you know, race team, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. That's your three tiers. ARC is the, is more the economy version of it. Elite is more detail, but also more price. Like on Gen 7s for it, another little Larry McNugget. The bottom tray comes off, and it has the detail of like the the you know the gearbox, uh, drive shaft, all that good stuff. You could see that underneath. Now again, that's for the elite detail, and then you have the next option. I don't know the official name for it, for it because it's completely new. But that's going to be like your super elite, which <laughs> not for me. Now, on your 164 line, you have a couple options as well. You have just your normal ARC, which is Action Racing Collectible. We call them in the in the diecast uh, universe, so to speak, we call them the Gold Series. We call them the, the boxed version cars. You'll get them in a little box and they are reclosable. You can open them up, you can take your car out, put it back in. Same way with the 124s. You could take them out, you could literally open them up, you could use gloves, there won't be any fingerprints on the car, so it's still brand new and mint. Same thing with the uh, resealable Gold Series cars. Now, there's also a economy line version of it called the NASCAR Authentics. There's two versions of this. You have the Winter Circle and the normal retail Authentics line. One of them's five dollars, the other is eight dollars. Let me tell you, the quality for one of them, the the five dollar retail line, it is hit or miss. <laughs> there are some that have very good quality with great quality decals, 
and some of the cars are very blurry. It varies. I mean, like, you'll get one wave that has eight cars in it, five of them are great looking, and then three of them have blurry decals. And then some of the waves are made on a cheaper, lower quality die cast mold that's bulky, doesn't roll well, decals peel off. So if you like quality, I personally would stay away from that line. But the Authentics Winter Circle line is fantastic. Not only do you get a resealable uh, clamshell packaging, you get a raced win card. All the die casts in that wave are raced win versions. So you're going to get confetti, dirt, and grime, all that beautiful cosmetic damage on the cars, and a lot of exclusives as well. Back to the cheaper Authentics line. You ain't going to get any race twins over there, and they're also non-reclosable. It is a cardboard Hot Wheels style. Once you peel off the card back to open the car, you can't reclose it. With the Winter Circle, you can reclose it, which is really good for storage. There's another version of the 164 is currently out, and it's called the Metal Chassis 164. These are the same uh, box design just about as the normal ARCs. However, they're manufactured with a metal plate instead of a plastic chassis. So the, the bottom of the car, which we'll just show a piece of plastic here, <laughs> this piece right here where the axles will, will, you know, land in, this would be all metal. This is a truck one. They don't make it in truck or Xfinity. It's only cup. So Gen 7. These are more expensive, but they have a lot more weight to them. Some collectors really prefer that. It makes the car feel higher quality. However, it doesn't have the rubber wheels that we saw with the Metal Chassis Gen 6 uh, versions. That could change in the future, but who knows? So that is pretty much all of your options for the 124 collector and the 164 collector for the current diecast market as of early 2024. Now, there is a brand new uh, diecast mold that just came out recently, and it's got everybody going crazy for it. So if you want something new, something kind of, you know, on the hype train, so to speak, Look into the late model diecast. They just released uh, the 164 version and the 124 version of it. It is a beautiful diecast mold. If you're into the short track late model scene, this could be a great, great thing for you to collect. They're made by Lionel, so it's the same company that makes all your diecast uh, for the NASCAR stars. But you're going to see a lot of NASCAR stars in these cars. Uh, it's not just going to be the, you know, the short track heroes. You're going to see the Chase Elliott's. You're going to see the Kyle Larson's. Uh, the drivers you see every day or uh, every week on Sunday. These are fantastic. I did a review on the 164. I can't, I, I can't recommend it enough. It is freaking amazing, the quality of it. Now, they do make truck 164s for both scales. However, this is another Larry McNugget, if you will. The 164 equivalent, as of early 2024, the truck is a generic mold. It is one size fits all. The Fords, Toyotas, Almost said Dodges, I wish they were back. And the Chevys have the same exact mold. But the 124s are completely manufacturer specific. So you get more detail with the 124 and you get more accuracy with the noses. The Xfinity cars are also made in both scales as well. The Xfinity cars fortunately are not on a generic mold. Same with the Cup Series. So that's just a little bit of a crash course of what to expect as a collector nowadays. And here's kind of where my personal recommendations go. If you're a brand new NASCAR diecast collector, I personally think the best way to get into collecting is actually the Black Friday sale at Circle B they have once a year. Now, obviously this doesn't do anybody any good in January or February of 2024 or whenever you're watching this, but every November, at Circle B Diecast, they have a big sale. Hundreds of diecasts, cheap as $2.50 sometimes. It's crazy how some of the deals. They have brand new 124s and mint in the package, $15. It's insane. It's the best sale possible. If I was a brand new collector, that's the best place to start. You'll be able to get all kinds of different diecast molds, see what you like, see what you want to collect, and you don't break the bank. So that is the best time, I think, to, to be a die-cast collector. But if that's not an option for you, I'd probably go with a few of the ARC Gold Series Gen 7s. I wouldn't upgrade the metal chassis just yet. And, and with the Authentics line, it's so hit or miss. If you buy a car in the Authentics line and it has the blurry mold, uh, uh, blurry decals, the bad die-cast mold, and it doesn't roll, you're probably going to get turned off from the die cast collecting and not want to get interest in it. Unless you're a really, really young fan and you can't 
you know, pick apart what is what, which I was like that. I couldn't tell what a PTC or a WLS mold car was in 2013 or 2014. I couldn't tell. So if you're, if, if you, if you know what you're looking for and you want quality, just get the gold series ones. You'll be able to get less of them because they are, they're more expensive. Trust me. <laughs> I do reviews on them. <laughs> they, uh, they're, they're pricey, but you get quality and they're consistent and that's something really important as a collector uh that i would shoot for and that's what i would recommend to a new collector who's never done any die cast collecting is get something that has quality so you because if you if you buy an authentics car and it doesn't roll right it looks funky you're like what am i doing but if you get something you really like a driver you're a fan of and it's good quality absolutely that's another thing is when you're when you start collecting don't just dive in and buy everything you see find a driver you like watch some races if you're a brand new nascar fan who do you like cheer for what well, do you like a certain sponsor do you like a certain manufacturer find something like that and get a couple of them don't buy a bunch of them because then you'll be like oh, okay this is too much i'm good get a couple of them and see how how your collection grows because uh, you can get burnt out collecting so it's important to kind of you know manage that as you go but those are just some practical advices I would give to any collector that's just wanting to get into NASCAR diecast collecting. And maybe a little bit of a, a, a up the speed, so to speak, for, for maybe some collectors who, have, who haven't <laughs> bought a diecast in a decade. There's a lot of people I've heard that have not watched NASCAR racing in over a decade. And they came back because of the Gen 7. Believe it or not, I've actually heard a lot of stories of that. So if you're completely new to the, what diecast collecting is nowadays, that's a good crash course. And of course, you know, if you want to save on shipping, you don't have to use it. Make sure you use a promo code down below over there at Circle B Diecast. You'll be able to save on shipping. And I'll explain it here for my newer viewers. What, how it works to, to get discounted shipping, you just put $30 worth of stuff in your car and it takes $6 off. And here's a fun Larry McNugget. You can actually get free shipping with this. If you get four 164 die casts, four brand new 164s, you put the code in, congratulations, the shipping is only $6. The order threshold's over 30. Guess what? It takes the shipping cost away. It's free shipping. So yeah, check that out. That'll definitely help you out. Get some die casts, get you interested in the hobby. But yeah, this is just some practical advices for um, any NASCAR die cast, uh, you know, beginner, collector, there's a lot of fun to be had with diecast. There's a lot of fun. People customize them, people modify them, people make uh, stop motions with them. Um, just make sure to keep your cars in good condition. Keep them away. Here's some, here's some practical tips to keep your cars in good condition, guys. Number one, keep them away from windows. They will yellow. I'm telling you, they will either sun bleach or they will yellow. Keep them away from windows. Number two, climate control if you keep them in a place that's too hot or too cold it can make the metal brittle on the older die casts and it can affect the the plastic in it it will yellow trust me it will so make sure to keep your die cast in a room temperature basically don't put them out in a woodshed in 150 degrees <laughs> just keep them in good good uh room temperature and number three there is a really good way to store your loose cars I see a lot of people, they have bags of die cast, and that has got to be the worst way to store your die cast. Trust me, it, don't do it. Here's a, here's a good tip. So they have these plastic clamshell packages, and I'll show one real quickly. So they have these little plastic clamshells. This is holding some 124 parts in it. And you can put a 164 scale die cast in here. So if you have a bunch of loose cars, and you don't know how to store them, and you don't want to chip up your stuff, buy a bunch of these you can get like 200 of these cases i think for like 60 or something on ebay they're like called hot wheels cases get the smallest size and um they're incredible guys they literally just pop open and they close and you can also stack these as well so if you have a pile of them that are not used you can just kind of stack them like cups so to speak fantastic storage for your 164 scale die cast that's a great alternative than putting them in a freaking bag while they get chipped up and they get ruined. That's another great advice for new collectors, especially the younger fans out there. It's a great way to keep your cars dust-free, paint-chip-free, and they're just 
you know, they're protected. You never, you don't have to worry about it, especially if you move a lot. Uh, you know, you go to different places or whatnot. Good way to keep your car safe. And my last bit of advice for this video that I would tell a new collector is, take a look at the Gen 4 era. There is a lot of great, high quality die casts, 124 and 164, that were overproduced to the cows come home. Do some research on NASCAR history. You'll see how much merchandise got made back in the 2000s. We're talking, it was not uncommon. This is just a rough number. It's not an exact number, but check this out. One 164 die cast in the elite scale. It was not uncommon for over 50,000 of that one version of that 164 to get made. There's usually like four or five different versions back in those days. Winter Circle, Club Car, 164 Lee, uh, probably a promo store exclusive. 55,000 of just one of those for many different paint schemes back in the early 2000s. Gordon alternates, uh, Wall Trip alternates, Dale Juniors, Tony Stewart's, you name it. To put that in comparison nowadays, most 164 production lines are like 2,500 to 5,000. That's a big difference. <laughs> so my point is, there's a buttload of good 2,000 stuff that is still mint in the package. You can pick up, you can get a lot of really good old die cast. Um, it's really dirt cheap. I'm just saying it's overproduced. So if you're a new collector, that's a great way to kind of get some of the older die casts and you're not like, if you open them, it's not going to affect the market. It's not going to destroy them because there's literally thousands of these things out there. Uh, don't even get me started on how much 90s die cast are still floating around. Uh, so that's a little bit of a kind of some advice. But thank you all so much for watching the video. I wanted to do another updated video on this, on like what's the current state of NASCAR die cast uh, collecting and how, you know, it can be very intimidating to get into a hobby like collecting NASCAR diecast because I get people all the time that ask me, what, what does ARC mean? Uh, what's the gold series? Uh, uh, what is the PTC mold? What PTC mold basically is a cheaper version of the normal mold. The good mold is called EL, L mold. Uh, PTC, WLS, or J mold are traditionally a cheaper manufacturing uh, mold. And the, when we say mold, we're talking like the the mold of the plastic the mold of the car it's just a it's just a a word we 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 call things in the community but it can be very intimidating for a new collector so hopefully this guide brought a little bit of uh, clarity to new collectors out there and um, I, I I even have people that are um, international viewers that talk about NASCAR diecast collecting and it's really cool to think people from countries they don't even race NASCAR races at. And they're actually interested in the sport. That is really freaking cool. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a blessed one, everybody. And hey, if you have anything to add to this video, maybe some practical advice that maybe I forgot because I forget a lot of things, comment it down below. I might do a part two to it. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of help out the newer uh, collectors out there. And uh, maybe I can uh, be, of, be of some good service. Have a great one, everybody. Diecast buffet. Me and my goofy hair. Not enough.